So um, let's get into sandbox one. Now remember, the sandboxes are for you to learn. That's the whole idea. They're supposed to be much easier and they're worth one point each, which is one tenth of the assignment. For each assignment and for each sandbox, I have listed the different apps that you can use for that assignment. So PyCharm is going to be on every one, spoiler alert, because you can use it for everything. And you can use these other ones as well for this sandbox challenge. Now, each sandbox challenge is going to have some very simple step-by-step -step instructions. Usually it's a monkey see, monkey do in that you will actually, I will say, do this and you do this. And it's going to be walking step-by-step. -step. At the end, sometimes I'll say, why don't you get creative and see see if you can, you know, make some changes to the code and see what happens. Some, you know, mess around and find out kind of things. Um, but usually in most of the sandbox assignments, there's not really a right answer per se. I just want to know that you've done it. So I'll have you take a screenshot and then I'll have you post that screenshot with something you learned and something you found difficult or struggled with in, the in that part of the class. And that will allow you to learn and get credit. And you can see here, we've got a lot of folks here with screenshots and um, I like to see the screenshots like this. You can do them as attachments if you want, but you can see if you scroll down other people's screenshots who have already done the work. The reason I do it this way, I don't do assignments this way, but I do sandboxes this way. The reason I do this for the sandboxes is because I want you to see what other people have done. This is about you trying some stuff out and learning and then just saying, hey, I tried this out too. Here's what I did. And you can see people did things a little different each time and that's totally fine. So let's do sandbox one. So it says, go to the website onlinepython.com. So I'm gonna open that up. And when I open up onlinepython.com, this is what I see. And this is, I'm sorry for the advertisements, but it's free, right? Free means that we you pay with your eyeballs. And sometimes the ads are like for Victoria's Secret and things like that. Thankfully, they're just hurts today. Yay, good ads. Um, anyway, so uh, what you'll see here is there's two parts to this. There's the upper part where you type your code and the lower part where it shows the results of your code. This code, we don't need. So the first thing I want you to do is get rid of it. So I'm going to delete that code. So there's nothing there. And I'm on line one with my flashing cursor. And so I'm going to write a program called Hello World. For those of you that are familiar with programming or learned any other programming languages, it's tradition to write a Hello World program as a first program of any new programming language that you learn. Why do we do that? We do that so that we can at least see the process of writing a program and getting it to run. It's the most simple thing you can do in any programming language is cause it to write the words hello world to the screen. Why do we choose hello world? Well, I'm just going to say it's tradition. It goes way back to like the 1970s when we were very, very, uh, very, very uh, new to computing, let's say, or computing was very new and the computers were the size of a room or the size of several rooms in a building, and you interacted them, interacted with them using paper punch cards with holes punched in them that you fed into the machine. Uh, it's much better now because, see, we get all these wonderful advertisements. OnlinePython.com. There's a link right in Canvas. Okay? And if, you, if, if I lose yet or you can't follow along, don't forget, I'm going to put the video online later so you can watch it. So in this upper window with a clean slate, what I'm going to type first is the word print with a left parenthesis and a right parenthesis afterwards. Print is a function in Python. A function is a command that does something. 
you know it's a function visually because it has the parentheses after it. And the parentheses are where we tell it what it's going to print in this case. The thing that goes in the parentheses is called an argument. It's not an argument like you have with your sibling. It's an argument that tells it what I'm going to print. Now I could print like the number five in here and it would print the number five. I can print a variety of things, but I want it to print hello world, those exact characters. So if I want it to print exact characters, I'm going to tell it that I'm going to print a string, which is also known as a string literal. And the way you can think about the string literal, what it means is I want you to print literally these characters, like exactly literally these characters. And so inside my quotes, I can use double quotes or I can use single quotes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use double just out of habit mostly, I'm gonna type hello world, just like that. So what I'm saying is, Python, I want you to print, and the thing that I want you to print is literally these characters, H-E-L-L-O space W-O-R-L-D exclamation point. Literally those things. And that's it. That's your first program, that's hello world. So now, I'm going to scroll down here just a little bit and I'm going to click this button that says run. And you can see it prints hello world. It also says process exited return code zero. That's not an error. This is what you will get at the end of your Python program that tells you how we did. If it says return code zero, that's good. That means zero errors, okay? You can ignore the press enter to exit terminal. That's just extra stuff. But the return code zero is significant. If we had an error in our program, it would give us a different return code and it would probably tell us what the error is. But for now, this is all we need. And so for the sandbox assignment, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a screenshot there are a variety of different ways to take screenshots. I don't really care which one you use, but I'm gonna take a screenshot just like that. And then I'm going to take that screenshot. And remember, I wanna post the screenshot and I wanna post something I learned and something I struggled with. I'm not looking for a whole paragraph here. I'm just like a few words, a sentence, if you say, well, this is so easy, I, I don't really think I learned anything, that's okay too. I just, this is just you checking in with me. So I'm gonna hit reply. And then right here is images. I wanna insert the image, upload an image. And then I'm going to find that screenshot. Let's see, there's my screenshot. There it is. I hit submit. Now it's putting the screenshot in that picture. It might take a minute for it to upload. Okay. And then I'm just going to say, I learned how to print. And I might say taking a screenshot is hard or something like that okay on my computer on the mac it is command shift four on a windows computer it's a little bit different there's a you can use the print screen key there are apps installed on these computers i think it's called snip it's under the start under the windows menu that will make an easy screenshot for you and if anybody else has any suggestions for other easier ways to take screenshots, there, like I said, there are a variety of different ways. If you get confused about how to take a screenshot, what I would suggest is just Googling it. But when you're done putting your screenshot in, typing your thing, you just hit reply, it'll post it, and then you're done. Okay, so that is how you handle the sandbox assignments. So that's the sandbox.